for all the warm weather fans out there welcome to another episode of pounds firearms today we are on upgrade number five I think we're gonna call it upgrade number six as well we're kind of gonna just put them together we're uh, we're coming down to the end we'll just maybe call it the final upgrade so we got five and six and a few miscellaneous pieces maybe five and six of the same I don't know this is built by you the YouTube viewer so I appreciate all your input on helping me put this scar together but today's final uh, um, final upgrade list is going to be we're going to put it uh, um, put on an OSS muzzle brake on it so this is the muzzle brake and it's gonna go tie along with the OSS suppressor it's their titanium um, 7.62 uh, along with this upgrade we're also going to do a, a grip a forward grip here so um, yeah I wasn't sure what to do you know some people are doing the shorty some people are doing the long some people are just doing the bipods so this one this is a grip pod um, this this has the steel insert so it's their, it's their high dollar guy but uh, it does both so not only do you have a grip hit the button you also have a bipod now Quick detach, that's kind of cool, so I can play around with it and see where I like it. But yeah, just squeeze them together. Collapses in, hit the button when you're ready to deploy the the bipod. If not, then you got a forward grip. So you can use it as a whole handle or C-clamp it, however you want to do it. We'll play around with that. The muzzle device is, uh, is from OSS. I have used this on a different 30 caliber, and it's fantastic. So I figured I'd move that over to the, uh, the SCAR rifle. So here's the muzzle device. So hopefully we get that sucker to screw on there. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Well, let's dive right in here. So a uh, quick recap, we've done the, done the optic. We've done the light, as you can see it over here. Done the light, we've done the uh, extended rail. We did the trigger on number four. Yeah, so we're off to five and six we'll just call it five as a combined one all right let's see where we can get going here so first off let's see where we can put this thing so again this is a grip pod it is patented quick release um, I have the adapter there's an adapter that kind of horseshoes out and it's got picatinny rails on either side so you can't you can mount lights or whatever you want to it um, I already have a light mounted up there, so I don't know if I need that yet. We'll play around with it here, but um, yeah, we'll try. Just put it on the short side. So the bad part that I was noticing here with the uh, with this extended four in that I did, the FN branded one, it puts this big old knot right here, and you can't really mount anything to it. Kind of, kind of lose some space here. So it's either before or an inch and a half plus the notch so I mean there's like a two inch gap right here right where I thought I needed it we didn't go over this yet but uh, here's some miscellaneous I'm gonna do a park mountain machine uh, their version of the bad lever and I have a couple adapters for uh, um, a sling um, I think the other problem with this forward grip that I chose from FN is normally they mount right here <laughs> well it's already being used by the extended grip so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to mount this to here so I might have to get a Picatinny version of it so that's a little sad not what I wanted to do but it happens we'll uh, we'll play around with it and see what we can get to here so we'll set these aside for right now but the other ones for the rear over here is the other one will stick out in this area for a quick disconnect but I don't know if we're gonna quick detach I don't know if we're gonna do it all right so from here this one feels okay. So it's shouldered right now. Come over, I got my pressure pad for the light. It's kind of a long grab, but yeah, I think normally it'll probably be hang out in this area unless I had to reach for the light. Um, yeah, then deploy the bipod. There we go, that's pretty cool. So I have to go out there and play with it to see what's gonna feel comfortable. I mean, this, this is a little shorter, I think. My natural grip wants to come out here if I want to try to extend my arm more. But then again, if I come out to here, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to run into a situation where 
if I move it all the way up here, that might be too far now. That's kind of a reach. And then the bipod piece, with the bipod definitely feels sturdier. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to play with that. So yeah, so that's, uh, we're going to use this one for now and see. It's, uh, it is longer, so I can do the full grip this way. Deploy it with my thumb. Uh, clamp it if you want you got a bunch of sticks out so you'd have to worry about that depending if you're trying to maneuver around stuff um yeah we'll play around that we'll see what that is so this is why i combined the two upgrades because that would have been a super quick video next one let's go ahead and get this muzzle device on here so i'm going to use this as a bipod uh let's see if we can get this into the general vicinity all right so we're going to try to get this guy onto here and we do have to index it I believe, uh, let me pull out the instructions. Yes, we want to indicate or index on the top slaps facing 12 to get a good comp going on that. Yeah, so we'll have to, example of proper installation. So this needs to be at the 12 o'clock. So we'll give that a whirl here and see what happens. First we need to do is, uh, Try to break this loose. Now let's make sure for all the people out there. Whoa, we're knocking stuff over. We are clear. Knock the camera around a little bit here. Sorry about that. Did you get on the flight? Oh, well, it turns out my mom's getting on the flight, so we'll have to make this quick. All right, well, let's see here. We need, I think it's a three quarters for this one. Yep, and I think it's a seven eighths. No, not seven eighths. So three quarters for that one, and a sixteen thirteenths for this one. There we go. Where's my three quarters at? Right here. All right. Well, let's see if we can break this sucker loose here. Oh, slipped off here. <clears throat> There we go. All right, the FN factory one it is, branded FM. That one works pretty well. Well, hopefully this OSS one matches here. It looks like we got a locking nut. I don't know why it's, I must have tightened it the wrong way here. There we go. All right, so we'll put this one all the way back. I won't go all the way back. I'll leave it a little bit of room. Because I'm going to have to index that. So that'll be my locking that to try to get that indexed. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, thread, uh, screw it on for now just to get it sized and just see how it looks. I will thread lock it later on. Let's see here. That's all the way back. I don't think I want it all the way back. We'll do a half turn forward. All right, so we need to index this. So if it goes all the way back, get to a 12. I don't want it all the way back here. So we're gonna, there we go. Let's try it right in this area here. All right, so I'm gonna stand up. That looks 12-ish to me. So I think this is a 7 8 Yes, that is a 7 8 This one was 7 16 So let's say... Uh, light's loose. Loosen that up a little bit, get that. All right, let's crank that sucker on there. Oh. Thing that is on there let's take a look at it here oh i may have missed 12. shucks let's see way to judge this here let me line this guy up 
you know, we're I'm on the 12. We're actually not far off. I'll have to play with that and see. Uh, I don't want to look down the barrel, but <laughs> I think, I mean, I'll step away here. Uh, you know, I'm, I am off just a hair. Let's see if we can loosen this guy back up here. Nothing's picking up. And that and I'm hitting this stuff. Let me see if that's lined up here before I crank this sucker down now. That one. I think something's going a little bit more. Yep, that may have been too much to see. Yep, that was a hair too much. Try that. Yes, I'm having birds fighting underneath the table. Hopefully you guys saw that on film because that was pretty cool. <laughs> it is spring out here in the Rockies, so they're uh, they're getting their friction on it. Looks like. Let's try that one. You know, we were darn close. It needs to go down just a hair. There, I moved it. Let's see if we can crank the top, locking them now. Can you stay on? I think we're dead on here. Without measuring it. Cool. Alright. Well, there we go. Well, this is the other reason why we combined both because that was a pretty quick video. Hummingbirds are over there feeding. There we go. So, this is what the comp looks like. So, the flashlight's far enough forward that it's even with the comp. Um, you might hear the baby. That's why I've been slow on some of the videos there. But he's out there whining. Change his diapers. Oh, all right. Well, there we go. So we'll call this upgrade number five. It's gonna have the grip. Hopefully that works out. I gotta find out where I want it. Uh, maybe I'll play around with that flashlight adapter too. I don't know if I want the flashlight that low because then the shadow might go up. Uh, but I got the comp on here, so I'm going to measure it, take a couple practice shots here, make sure everything's lined up, make sure I like the way the comp is working, and as long as everything's working um, and it lines up here, we'll go ahead and lock tight that sucker on. Let's see here. Oh man, I didn't bring the suppressor out. Give me a 10 seconds here, let me go grab the suppressor, watch the fast forward music. All right, and we're back. So here's my suppressor. It is the 762. It's the uh, QD 762 Titanium. Righty or lefty tidy when it comes to OSS suppressors. I can't twist it off, so that's good. Cool. Where you, there you go. That's how she's going to look with the suppressor. I don't know if you can see the light or not, but there's a light down there somewhere. Whoa. We got a bipod, suppressor. Yeah. I'll have to play around with this and see what it looks like. Cool. Well, guys, if you ask me, you built one heck of a scar here. I'm really liking this. Um, I have to switch this back out for the Midwest Industries just because I am losing the uh, the ability to add those QD mounts here. Um, also, the big gap here that kind of that's kind of annoying. Um, I'll have to look at it again to see if it actually reduces the gap if I were to put the four, uh, the grip on here. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think uh, the only thing that's really left now is to um, go out and shoot it, zero the sucker in, and get it all shot. I do have the irons. Uh, zoom or sided in, but I don't have the optic sided in. Oh, 
Heck, let's put, see if we can put this bat lever on real quick. I know the QDs won't work, but I think to do the bat lever, we're probably gonna have to pull out the trigger module here. So let me go ahead and slide that forward. All right, look, it looks, it's gonna go on a lot like a bat lever, minus there are two screws for it. But same concept. So I think we're getting it on here. I want to strip those out. So put those on loose first, then tight. Cool. Let's finger tight them for now. Let's put this trigger module back on. Back in first. Slide back. Front pin. Function check. Oh man, that Timmy trigger sure is nice. Cool. Alright, well, there you go. Heck, so we're doing six, seven, and eight upgrades, it looks like, huh? So, yeah, there's the bad lever now. Let's see if we can lock it open. Yeah, it locks open. Cool. Hit the uh, lever. Drops the bolt. Lock it open. Drops the bolt. Lock it open. Drops the bolt from there. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm digging this. So, the one uh, spoiler alert. Not sure if you guys saw it, but since the very first video, I actually upgraded this and I didn't want to disclose anything to see who actually caught this. But normally the factory one's a little circle. This is one of my very first upgrades. Actually, before even the upgrade number one, I already had this on there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but um, yeah, if you did, let me know in the comments because that was kind of a, a surprise that I was leaving at the end. But yeah, what do you guys think here? So we'll uh, do a quick re recap. So we've done optic. So it's a one to eight vortex. We'll go ahead and um, sight that guy in. We did the light was next, so we did do a uh, streamlight PLX or ProTac um, with the pressure pad. I did wire it through like this, snake it around, and I used this uh, Larue's um, uh, keepers there. Uh, upgrade number three was the rail. Did the front rail. I did two of them. I did the uh, Midwest Industries first, then I, I did the FN branded one. Um, not liking this one only because it is not a quick uh, disconnect. So if I ever wanted to swap out barrels, I couldn't do it. Um, I'd have to completely take off this front piece to get the barrel off. Midwest Industries comes out with the barrel assembly. And I lose my QD mounts. Or, well, my adapters for the QD, which would have gone there. So now i got to find something else for a sling. Um, yeah. Then the upgrade, the final upgrade, we did the grip with the built-in bipod. I'm kind of digging that so I get both in one shot. I don't have to, I know I have rail space for it, but that way I don't have to worry about, unless I really wanted the extra leverage to put maybe a bigger bipod here and then put the hand grip back here. And then we did, of course, the muzzle device. Oh. Carbon everywhere. Got the muzzle device. Hopefully that's lined up here. We'll get that uh, thing locked tight it in. We'll take a couple shots to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, did the bad lever. Couldn't do the QD mounts. Did the oversized mag release on the shooter side. And yeah, there you go. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys building this for me. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is uh, we're going to go get a few things together and I'll do a separate video of the range. We'll do a range session with this, kind of putting it all together, maybe zeroing in the optic, uh, making sure it all works, seeing how the battle lever is going to work, or I forget what the B, uh, PMF calls it. Um, test out that trigger, see where I want the grip, see how it does with the suppressor. Probably zero it all in with the suppressor. This is why I haven't zeroed it yet, because I wanted to go ahead and do it with the suppressor on there. Um, yeah, this is a fancy looking scar. Hope you guys agree with me there. It's uh, pretty cool looking. Um, you guys did a great job building it. 
So I appreciate all your time, guys. That's the one thing I wanted to do here is I uh, went ahead and brought the scale over. But I think, uh, don't quote me, but I'll put it up here somewhere. I want to say when we first got the scars, right around eight pounds. Um, now with six plus upgrades, let's see what this thing weighs now here. So let's see if we can get this guy out of the way. Turn this on, see if it's zeros. All right, it's at zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the a steel scar mag. Let's see. First attempt here, 12.8 pounds. Let's make sure it's zeroed. Yep, it still shows zero. Oh, 12.9 now. Still zeroed. 12.9, we'll call it 12.8. So we'll call it 12.8 and a half. But there we go. 12.8 pounds with an empty magazine and all six upgrades. That's uh, that's, that's pretty surprising. I guess I'm gonna go out and get lighter stuff. But yeah. All right, guys. So I appreciate all your time, guys. Thank you for watching, and thank you for putting this together for me. This is Pound from Pound's Firearms, signing off.